Okay, gang, so here we are, and today is the big reveal day for the very first RV Dreaming YouTube channel video, and we are so excited that we are going to give away $1,000 cash to the very first 1,000 subscribers. Well, not really. We can't afford to do that, but we'd like to, and if it's the thought that counts, we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button because it helps others find us when they do a search and helps with the YouTube algorithms. Um, we've had some new gear, new camera equipment, and some other new gear and software, so we have a big learning curve, so that pushed us back a few weeks, as you might remember. Uh, I bring, brought that up a few weeks ago, um, but we're working through that, and uh, we're now ready to, to unveil our very first video, and we're going to get better as we go, and with your help and your uh, suggestions, we'll implement those as we can, and we'll go from there, and we're ready to, to put this thing out there. So uh, we hope you enjoy it, and there'll be a lot more to come, and uh, so... Let us know what you think in the comments down below. So here's a little Facebook poke for you, and we'll see you on the other side. Hi, I'm Rick, and on this episode of RV Dreaming... God, I look like shit. Makeup! That's not makeup. That's car wax. Welcome to RV Dreaming. Come on in for a tour. So here we are inside a brand new 2019 Jayco Eagle 330 RSTS. This model is 39 feet 3 inches long and about 36 feet in the box length. Um, this is a, uh, a higher end, heavily built um, travel trailer. It's built much like an Eagle fifth wheel would be, uh, with 5 8 inch tongue and groove floor decking and 3 8 inch uh, plywood decking for the roof. Um, and this is considered a flat deck fifth wheel. It's basically a fifth, fifth wheel without the steps or the, the outside storage. Um, so as you walk in the main entry door, you'll see overhead here, you got your typical uh, manual controls for your exterior lighting, your water pump, heaters for the water, uh, water, water heater, and then you got your uh, slide room operation switches here, as well as your awnings. And this has the optional second awning. Down below here, we have one control by LCI. This controls many of the RV functions um, electronically. And then below that, um, we've added a smart battery monitor system by Victron Energy, as well as the CCGX uh, remote monitor panel. And this monitors all electrical activity from solar, uh, converters, inverters, solar controllers and the like. And then we had to relocate our thermostat and our light switches. Okay, so here we are inside the main dining area. And in this particular coach, we ordered it with a freestanding dinette. Uh, I prefer that in an RV because it gives you more flexibility with seating. Um, this also has a, uh, a leaf in the table. So if you want to fit uh, four or five or six people, uh, you certainly have that option. Gives you a little more space. Um, and this also comes with the two main chairs as well as two folding chairs that go under the bed when you travel or when you don't need, the, when you don't need them out, if this is like a couple's coach. Uh, but they're also very comfortable and they match very well with the main chairs. This is also available with a booth dinette, a more traditional style. Uh, and those are handy for uh, RV uh, families that have kids uh, that need that little extra sleeping space. So come on back here and we'll show you the, um, the dual theater seating. This is an option. Uh, standard is uh, dual recliners, which I don't personally care for the recliners because they kind of move around and rock around when you're going down the road and you got to be strapped down and they can cause damage and cause some problems and will just wear out. Whereas these are wall huggers and uh, they're very firm and comfortable and when you go to recline, they, they move away from the wall. They just they never uh, recline back onto the wall, which is kind of the earlier style recliners used to do. So no matter how far you go back, these stay away from the wall. So it's very handy and convenient, very comfortable. Really happy with this this decision. Okay, and here in the main living area, we have a full-size couch with end tables on either side. Uh, these feature two AC outlets on either side, along with USB ports on each side. And one thing I like about this particular setup is it's a nearly full-size couch with the end tables. Other RVs, you get a, a couch that goes wall-to-wall, -wall and you have no end tables. 
makes it kind of hard to have your drinks or your magazines or books. Uh, or you end up with really wide end tables and a very narrow couch, which you can't really lounge on, which I like to do. So this is a very good setup, uh, works perfectly uh, for the way I like to use an RV. If you follow me over here to this side, we have the full-size entertainment center with a 45-inch Furion TV. That's LED. And then uh, you have your stereo up above here, USB ports, uh, and HDMI connections up above the other cabinet. There's another AC outlet in there, which is handy. Uh, and then down below, we have the Furion sound bar. And that's also tied into the main speaker system if you turn that feature on. And then we got a 36-inch uh, Furion fireplace down below. Uh, so it's a nice feature to have. It does have heat. And it works pretty well to heat up this area, and it does a very good job. Okay, so here we are inside the, the main kitchen galley area of the uh, 330 RSTS. And uh, there's a lot to like in this kitchen, especially if you like to cook as much as we do, and if you like to eat as much as I do. Um, we have a walk-in pantry, although I don't know who's going to walk in here. No human I know is going to fit in there, but it is a very nice size. All the shelves are fully adjustable from top to bottom, so you can set it up any way you like. It has a motion detecting light, so as soon as it senses the door, it lights up for you. So, really nice setup with that. Very handy. Got a little storage next to the microwave, a 1500 watt microwave. So this is big and powerful. Um, we actually ran run this off an inverter system. So about half this RV is inverted, and the other half requires shore power or generator to run. Uh, but that makes it nice because we can run this whole thing off the sun and off batteries. Uh, Everything but the air conditioning, actually, including the refrigerator. Um, so, very powerful microwave. Um, and so now, because it's on an inverter, we can run the fan and the lighting here, uh, even if we're out boondocking, which is important if you're cooking and you got steam and you want to vent that outside. Um, so down below, we got a Furion stove. This is a newer model, and it's got the glass top and backsplash, which is really handy. It also has uh, a place for your knives back behind it. And it's also a very nice size. And down below here, it comes with a nice uh, storage drawer for your pots and pans. And everything in the kitchen is soft closed. So moving down, we're at the uh, refrigerator end of the kitchen. And uh, one nice thing about this RV, it gives you lots of choices. The standard refrigerator is a RV 8 cubic foot refrigerator. Moving up the price ladder from there is a LG residential refrigerator in stainless steel. It's very nice. Um, I personally don't have a use for residential style refrigerators and RVs. One, if you ever have to have them serviced, the, uh, usually the company, let's say LG or Samsung, requires refrigerators to be removed from the RV, and that's on your dime uh, for repairs. Uh, they don't want to bring a tech in to, to fix them or service them in the, in the RV itself. That can be very costly because sometimes these have to go out a window or a slide out, and that can be very expensive. Uh, the other thing is um, you got to run these off a big battery bank to keep them powered up if you boondock. And uh, Now, if you're going to take one of these RVs and you're going to plug it into a campsite somewhere and you always got power, a, a residential refrigerator might be a great way to go. But I prefer the RV type so you have the option of propane. So this is the most expensive option. It's about $2,642 more than the standard RV refrigerator. And it's a four-door Dometic uh, RV refrigerator and it's 12 and a half cubic feet uh, so very spacious inside um, we've cooked for many 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 people over many days and haven't even filled this thing up we've come close but lots of extra room so really happy with this fridge does a great job okay and here one of the nice features about this kitchen of course uh, lots of people love an island kitchen um, my preference is a front kitchen that wraps around that's just not an option with this type of floor plan so an island kitchen is kind of the next best thing. Uh, I'm a counter space freak, and I like a lot of counter space because you want a lot of prep room for food and pots and pans and all your dishes and everything. So this is a, a very nice kitchen. Uh, basically, no complaints. I wish it had a little bit more storage, but it, it does pretty good. Um, you got two large cabinets under here, and there's a garbage can on this side, and a shelf in here under the sink. So quite a bit of room. One of the upgrades I did was I put in a... Uh, call again water filter here and that's kind of a nice feature to have because uh, at this price point this RV in my opinion should have came with a whole RV water filtration system but it just doesn't and that's kind of a shocking for this price level but for under 50 bucks or so we were able to add our own it's got the nice stainless steel uh, pull-out sprayer and this is um, residential quality this is this is metal this isn't plastic like in a lot of RVs 
So it's nice to see that they stepped up. The countertops, by the way, these are actually LG highbacks. This is the real deal. This is real solid service countertops. So it's nice that they went that extra step and went with something that's actually pretty high end. For 2019, it also comes with a bamboo and the stainless steel drying rack. That's a nice little feature. It just makes uh, drying your dishes or let's say uh, cleaning vegetables and you can lay them out here on your rack real nice. Um, this is actually supposed to be a cutting board. We use it just for cosmetics. We don't cut on this or get it wet because it will warp. And it goes right back to shape when it dries out. But we prefer to use this for, for decoration. That's about it. We have a plastic cutting board for cutting with. But obviously uh, this is actually a cutting board if that's what you want to use it for. Following down to the other end of the island is a pop-up 110 outlet and it's got a couple USB ports here. Um, everyone thinks this is cool. I think it's cool, but I think what's even cooler is simply to have extra outlets on the end. Uh, that way it's out of sight, out of mind, and it doesn't take up your counter space. Nothing wrong with this, uh, but if but if you know, I'm pretty particular and what would be just as functional and uh, not taking up any counter space as if it's off to the side. Uh, but that's the way they do it and I, and I like to have it, so it's a nice feature. So the last stop in our kitchen tour on the Jayco Eagle 330 RSTS is the coffee bar, which isn't really a coffee bar at all, it's just what I call it. But in reality, it's turned into our ice maker and alcohol bar, when our real coffee bar has ended up migrating over to the stove area because it just worked out better for space reasons. So back over here to the former coffee bar, um, this cabinet is absolutely massive and this is a great workspace. Um, this is how we use it. It works great. Uh, we've got grill, electric grill, pots and pans, a new wave oven in here. Uh, and this goes back probably a good two feet. So this is uh, probably one of the most massive cabinets you're ever going to see in any RV. In addition to that, we've got underneath uh, the fridge, in another soft closed drawer, there's another pots and pans drawer. Uh, pretty handy little feature to have there. And of course you have your furnace under here, where this grill is. And then you have your overhead cabinet space, which is nice to have. One of the many modifications I've made is I added this power meter here up above, and this displays AC, voltage, amperage, and wattage. And I don't think you're going to see that in any other RV. I never have, and it's a great item to have. Uh, if you boondock like we do, this allows you to monitor from the kitchen where all your appliances are, how many watts you're pulling out of all your appliances. Pretty fan handy feature to have. And inside here is a convertible cabinet. Uh, this cabinet can be used as like a coat storage or you can fold down a shelf inside and you can use it as two tier storage. We also have our Victron Energy uh, 150-70 solar controller in here and again there will be a video on all of these modifications you'll get to see all those little detail things in uh, several coming videos. Uh, but that's it for the uh, interior tour of the kitchen and living area and later on we're going to take a look at the bathroom and the bedroom here in just a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at the 330 RSTS bathroom, and when we're done with that, we'll cruise on back to the bedroom and take a peek there. Come on back. So the first thing you notice when you enter the uh, the bathroom of the 330 RSTS is this massive countertop. Uh, this is residential in size. You could almost throw a dance party on here if you were so inclined. Uh, moving up, we've got a nice little linen closet here. Not a lot of space, but it's enough to get by. Uh, and then they also built this, uh, I believe Jayco builds this in-house, this medicine cabinet. It's very heavy and sturdy. It's got a very strong magnet door. And then it has that nice LED uh, indirect lighting, backlighting back there, which uh, is great for night times and not blinding yourself uh, in the mornings. Um, another residential feature that is, I just can't get enough of is a 60-inch residential shower uh, with a triple glass door. Uh, what a great size shower to come into. You're no longer cramped. We also upgrade to the Oxygenix shower head, which there'll be a link down below at the bottom of the video. And then also you'll notice that little blue LED light up there, which may seem a bit gimmicky, but at night you can leave just that on and it lights up this entire bathroom in an eye-friendly blue hue. Uh, it's easy on the eyes and you can actually function here completely in the dark with just that blue light. So really nice feature. It's a little LED, so it uses hardly any energy at all. A uh, great little uh, thoughtful touch that Jayco did. We'll move over to our right, which you'll see the porcelain foot flush toilet. And that's also a nice feature and one you'd expect at this price point. Uh, porcelain is nice because it's a lot easier to clean. They flush nicer than a, than a standard to a plastic toilet. And they just look better and last longer. And then moving finally up the wall here, 
Uh, we have a towel bar, nothing spectacular about that. But in 2018, you used to have a pocket door here into the bedroom. And they got rid of that for 2019. I kind of wish they would have left it as an option. Um, I prefer this setup because I like having another towel bar. Uh, but I can see where people might want the convenience of going in and out of the uh, bedroom to bathroom without going out the main into the main hallway. But either way, this setup works out really well. And this bathroom is just awesome for space. So couldn't be happier. On the final stop of our tour of the 2019 Jayco Eagle 330R STS is the master bedroom. So come on back and we'll take a peek. The first thing you'll notice when you come into the Eagle bedroom is this residential Simmons mattress. This is a kind of the style I would say is, it reminds me of a uh, hotel uh, mattress. It's very firm but very comfortable. Um, with the queen size, it does come with end cab cabinets on either side, or nightstands rather. And uh, those are very handy for your cell phones and your CPAP machines or whatever you might need. If you order the queen, of course, those go away and you get the full width of the slide out with a king bed. Uh, I personally preferred the queen because you have plenty of room for sleeping and you gain that walk around ability of this space. And that makes it much easier for cleaning, for vacuuming, for making the bed, and just usability. You can get to the closet much easier with that extra space. Um, another nice thing Jayco did is they put AC outlets on either side of the bed and when we upgraded this RV with uh, inversion, when we inverted half the RV outlets, that outlet there on the left is inverted. The outlet on the right is AC to AC. Up above the bed you'll see uh, some storage cabinets there with some accent lighting and map lights or reading lights. In this mode they're configured for reading. Uh, a quick tap turns them to blue and this uh, gives you a nice uh, ambiance and uh, you know it uh, allows you to come in and have enough light to see what you're doing without blinding you at night. So that's a nice feature to have. Uh, windows that open on either side and all the windows by the way in this RV, something I haven't mentioned, are double pane frameless or flush glass as they could say, uh, which is really nice. It cuts down on noise, the sweat, and uh, gives you a lot better insulation properties. Um, this has a fifth wheel style closet that goes all the way across the front. Uh, storage from the outside, pass through all the way underneath. Very similar to a fifth wheel. Uh, it's divided in the middle, kind of a his and hers type of setup. Uh, lots of room in here and it's very deep. The closet is probably two and a half feet deep. Uh, and then moving over to this cabinet here, um, this is a washer dryer prepped and that's a, a mandatory option. Uh, this does not have room for a separate washer and dryer, but it will fit like a splendid all-in-one. So I, prefer, I would prefer a separate units, um, but in this configuration, there's only room for a combo, which, you know, that'll just, that'll just have to work. And down the road, I'll probably put one in. Um, a lot of people love them, so I'm hoping I will too. So in this configuration, if you don't have the washer and dryer actually installed, you end up with a very large uh, storage area and more storage up above. So very handy. And then over here, we added a Ryobi 18 volt stick vac. Uh, there will be a link in the bottom of the video for this. Uh, we'll be talking about this in a later up upgrade video. Um, but uh, on the side of the cabinet here, you can't see the uh, tank monitor for the washer and dryer holding tank is on the side here. You have a 12 volt outlet as well as AC outlets and USB plugs all on the side here. So very handy, a lot of useful features on the side of this dresser. And then you have a small six drawer dresser. Not a lot of space in here, but it's enough for your, even if you're full time, you could probably make this work given that you have all this other storage in here. Up above, optional, uh, it's pre-wired for television. You got your AC outlet and your cable and satellite. They're wired separate, so that's a nice feature. And then you have your backer board here for mounting your TV. It's about a $435 option, and I just figured uh, for that money, for about half that, you can buy a better TV and mount it yourself. Um, so, anyways, very functional, nice uh, bedroom. And this is a 50 amp coach. It also has a 15K AC, which is overkill. They, they could have put an 8 or 11K unit up there and because that only cools this bedroom but they went with the 15k and you know i'm not gonna argue with them uh, but there it is so this coach can uh, cool down pretty pretty rapidly so so that's it that wraps up the tour of the uh 2019 jayco eagle 330 rsts this interior is known as modern farmhouse it's that white with the antiquing looking on the cabinetry uh, this is also available in american tradition which is your traditional mid brown tone woods uh, and it's also very nice if you like that. I, I prefer the light look because there's no patterns and all of the colors are solid. So it will never, this will never date. It'll never become dated. It will always look fresh even 20 years from now. 
Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that tour of the 2019 Jayco Eagle 330 RSTS in modern farmhouse decor. Um, if you like that video, and of course I hope you do, I uh, hope you'll hit that subscribe button and the th give us a thumbs up on that little like button. And you also can hit that notification icon. That'll let you know when we do new content and new videos. That'll give you a little reminder on your phone or your PC uh, to, to come and check us back out and uh, see what else we have new for you. Uh, we'll be doing uh, an outside video if you already haven't seen that. We'll also be doing videos of all of the different modifications. And boy, are there a lot of modifications. So without further ado, I'm going to get out of the way and let you guys just enjoy a quick fly through of the entire RV. So we'll see you next time. Here's another little Facebook poke. Makeup. Oh crap, I dropped there. These are blue. Fly through take two. Flight slipping. <laughs> Hi, come on in for a tour. No! God damn it. Hi, come on in.